All right, welcome back, everyone. We've been doing these daily check-ins with Raj Mathai, but today we have a special guest, Carlos Eustis. He's a sports anchor at Telemundo 48, our sister station. Hi, gentlemen. How are you all? Good to Rachel see you, first. Carlos. Carlos, good to see you, man. Abby, now you're bringing in the rock stars. When we get Carlos in, that, that's big time. <laughs> I love it. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you both. <laughs> So let's talk about quickly because, I mean, you guys are both out of quarantine now, right? Yeah, Carlos, take it away. I'll let you take the lead on this one because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, uh, today today was the first day that, that the app uh, clear. Um, so technically, we're, we're, we're allowed now to do more stuff. Um, before this, we were only allowed to go from the venues to, to the, well, in my case, from the venues to the International Breakhand Center, and that was it. And uh, now if I want to shoot a story, maybe about the vending machines or something else, I can actually do it uh, and, and go further away. Because compared to Rash, Rash was in an area where he could actually at least walk to that 7-Eleven and do the story. I couldn't even do that. Ah, that's <laughs> crazy. So now you have a little bit more liberty. But both of them obviously are covering the Tokyo Olympics right now. And Raj, as per usual, I've been seeing your social media. And you, first of all, a great choice of music. You can't hear it here, but it's the BG <laughs> Staying Alive. And you gave us a whole, whole vlog here of everything you were doing yesterday. We talked about it briefly during the check-in we did. And look at that. What, what is it that she was giving you there in that video? She was giving me or origami. She just came up to us oh. and, you know, there's a language barrier. And she had all this origami and she goes, here. So we, we thought she was, you know, selling it to us we bring we brought out some yeah she goes no 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 money just a gift so it's just, the people are so cool carlos i can't wait till you get out and out and about in town people are just so cool the, that video there was the uh Tsukiji market that's the famous famous fish market uh here where everyone gets their sushi all the restaurants so you know, when you're a kid and, and you just put everything on your plate because you see so many good things and your eyes are bigger than your stomach that's, that was me, day one, out of quarantine. I went everywhere. I was out till two in the morning. I probably had bags underneath my eyes. It was like <laughs> Don't it was a kid in the candy store. <laughs> um, before great. I go to Carlos and ask him what he's been doing, I also noticed in the video that you were giving the people some stuff. I couldn't tell what you were giving them, but you were giving them stuff. I made a lot of friends. I saw, yeah, so, I saw you made so a lot Carlos, of friends. So Carlos, when you go out, go out with the, with some pins because you will be everyone's best oh. friend. So here in Japan, there's no tipping. So we just want to express our gratitude, right? And just, you know, a little goodwill with everyone. And so we just brought a bag of NBC pins, which is really, you know, everyone loves trading Olympics pins. And every time we eat at a restaurant or just say hi to someone, we would just present them with two hands, right? You present them a pin and, oh, their eyes light up. It, it, it's not just because they're Japanese, it's everyone around the world. You exchange pins and that's just a, an Olympics custom and it's, and it's fabulous. That's what it was, pins. Okay, I figured, I was like, they kind of look like pins, but okay, so Carlos, what have you been up to? I mean, you just started your first day of non-quarantine. What, what do you have <laughs> planned for today? I, I mean, today I have a piece of day for now. Um, that's, that's a piece of my, of my stories. I've been actually been in contact with all the athletes that have been winning medals and, and some of them that are, that are like possible medalists in, in, in the Hispanic countries. Um, so yesterday was a full packed day with a, with a lot of them. Um, we talked to the swimmer from Auburn who was seventh place in, 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 that, um, in that race with Dressel, but that he actually was, you know, it's a, a Guatemalan uh, swimmer that was one second away from a world record so the, it's crazy to think about that um and then a bunch of a, a bunch of other people including katie ledecky which is when i ran into rash yesterday uh, <laughs> katie did a set you a guys ran into with each us. other yeah so katie did. did a segment with us for 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 telemundo so so i've been I, i've been doing that it's been basically a lot of a lot of athletes talking to them knowing their stories uh it's it, it's fantastic so so that's what i'm up to i mean now now that i can see rash i, I we, must, we definitely have to get together at least for some tea or something yeah. <laughs> i just have been unlucky I, I don't i don't get the bag of pins i've been begging for yeah. pins like i have not been able to exchange pins whatsoever and in real i was like covering them love so oh, if, man. If, if rash knows where they are i'm gonna regret them <laughs> Carlos, I'm gonna come, come up, over to, to. We're gonna meet at the NBC Telemundo newsroom at the at the main hotel, and I will bring some pins for you, my friend. Because yes, it is it is better than currency here. Uh, and Carlos, we'll there do tea. Go. We'll do tea together, but let's do some sake as well. I mean, let's get real, Ooh. right? <laughs> and I'll I mean, just yep. sit in my house and watch you guys. 
<laughs> I mean, Japanese Japanese whiskey uh, has has been moving up too. So I'm 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 up for some Japanese whiskey too. So I, 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 I gotta, I'll take I gotta you up on that. Rush. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful on that one, or I'll sleep through some live shots. <laughs> Oh, well, this sounds like a blast, uh, and we'll be watching. Hopefully, you post some stuff up. So, Carlos, really big. You know, Mexico had a game with South Korea. They won 6-3. to three. What a crazy score. And they're playing against Brazil, you know, on Tuesday. Tell me, what was it like? You're out there. You know, you're Mexican. I'm Mexican. This makes me happy. What's going I on? Mean, How's everyone I got to tell you something. Here in the hotel where I'm staying, uh, the Brazil national team, both the women and the women are staying. Uh, and uh, I have a, I have a, I have an awesome, I have an awesome anecdote with you guys. Uh, actually, let me, let me get up real quick. Okay. Don't get, don't get, <laughs> I, I told this you he's be big time. He's staying with the, he's staying with the Brazilian national soccer team. I mean, the football team. Just so, name dropping left and right. So <laughs> what, what happened was, uh, I got in the, I got in the elevator, and one of the coaches from the Brazilian national team, some that I had, I was actually taking my laundry to the, to the international broadcasting center to get to do laundry. And he saw me and he said, oh, we haven't been able to go to the store. Uh, where is the store? And I was like, well, this is in the International Broadcasting Center, but I'm sure you can go to the Olympic Villa one. And they tried to go to the Olympic Village one and it didn't work. They didn't let, well, they let them in, but there was too many of them and they were going to take too long and they only have half an hour. So he texted me and said, would you mind getting some stuff for me? And I was like, of course not. So I took pictures of everything that I had available. I, I bought it for him. I brought it, I brought it over. And they got me a Brazil jersey. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> that is that really is so cool, cool, Carlos. You're, now, it would be better because you know them. this, Abby. They'll remember you. Abby, Abby, you know, Carlos is a pretty high-level uh, soccer player himself. So what would be really cool is he suits up for Brazil and is a, a substitution <laughs> in, in, in extra time for, for their next match. <laughs> I would never do that. They play Mexico. Are you kidding me? I, I would pretend I'm... And, that, and that's the thing, like, I had some of my friends, like, after I talked about the story, it was like, oh, you're fraternizing with the enemy. And it's like, well, I guess. Uh, but no, uh, going back to Mexico, but I think it's fantastic. I, I said it from the beginning. Uh, Mexico comes into this tournament with players that have been consistently starting at the top level, at least in Mexican soccer, for three, four years. And for 23-year-olds, because let's remember that the soccer for the men's, uh, all players have to be under 24 years old. Uh, that's a that's a rule they implanted with with FIFA uh, after after certain years because they didn't want to compete with the World Cup. When the World Cup came around, they said, "Hey, listen, we're gonna let you, like we're gonna co collaborate so we have the Olympic tournament." But the only thing we're asking is that all the players have to be youth players. So all players oh. in these tournaments are under 24 years old, except for three. They let you bring three stars that are over the age. Um, so again, there's a lot of young kids, like the Japan team actually in the European teams, when you look at them, Spain, for example, they actually don't even have U24 players. All the players, oh. because of how the, how the rosters are built, they're under 21. So everybody in mm. Spain, it's under 21 years old. Uh, Brazil actually used under 23 years old. Uh, Japan has under 21 year olds. So it, that's what makes it really exciting. And in this case, Mexico, yeah. the roster that they brought, even though they're 23 year olds, most of them have been playing as a starter on their teams for two, three years. And, and that's something that Mexico has never done before. Even the team that won the gold medal in 2012 did not have that experience. So the five so of them have experienced. it now. Um, yeah. But I'm saying like experience playing, that's why it looks so dominant. Mm -hmm. Because it's mm -hmm. players that once you play at the top level and you're competing against other guys, are some of them are in senior national teams, you know, yeah. it reflects. And that's why that result from the 6-3 like actually came to be. Wow, yeah, it was a crazy score. And so Carlos, you are a player. Raj, have you have you ever played soccer? I, w I was a really good soccer player and oh. then my career ended when I was about 13. <laughs> <laughs> I I invited right. I invited Raj for the record. I've been inviting Raj to play soccer with us for he did. at least year and something and I have not convinced him. So hopefully I, now I, that I think this. I had good connections, he will come. Carlos, I will I will come through. We'll do it back in the Bay Area when we get back to the States. I love it. Love that. Okay, last thing here, guys. Raj, this is something you posted on your stories. You say, the cleanest subway in the world. You got on it. I mean, it looks clean in this black and white photo. It's spotless. Guys, it's spotless. And, you know, you hear about this all the time, but I finally just had to see it for myself. The, the, the stations are spotless. I can't find a single piece of garbage in this whole darn city. And, wow. and the subways are spotless. I mean, it looks like a museum. You walk down, take the escalator down, and you look around and you're thinking, okay, is this fake? Is this a museum? 
And then the train comes, everyone orderly gets in, everyone's space socially distanced. There's no garbage, there's no graffiti. I went to a public restroom that it's, it, it's, it's amazing. The city just it functions at such a high level. It's great. It really, it, it's amazing. And, and I tell you, uh, on top of what Rash is saying, and, uh -huh. and I, I'll tell Rash to keep an eye, I don't know if he's noticed. If you see any 18 wheeler here, like any, any trailer, those things no. are so shiny. Just, just look at them. The boxes, <laughs> the boxes are like all aluminum, and they're like really shiny. The the you could you could you could eat on top of the grill of these eighteen wheelers. This is how guy. clean it is. I, I also yeah. And speaking of transportation, I went on my first taxi ride yesterday. Oh, how and was the that? Taxis are spot. The taxis are spotless. Outside, wow. it looks like they just went through and got waxed and washed. Inside, they're clean. It's and, and you know what's funny, Carlos, you guys could, might relate to this. You know, I'm from India originally. And when I go back to India, it's mass, it's chaos. And it's just beautiful chaos. And it's it's dirty at times, it's this at times. And I'm wondering when Japanese people visit India, what they think. What they it's think. it's totally different. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's I've, been totally to, different. I've been to both India and Mexico. And I got to tell you, the first time that I went to India, well, I only went there once. But when I went to India, it reminded me a lot of Mexico. And I kept saying, oh, my gosh, this reminds me of Mexico, Mexico. So it's very similar. And, yeah, I can't even imagine what Japanese people might think <laughs> when they go to our countries. And it's very different, very different flow for sure. But anyway, guys, we can talk for hours here, but I'll let you both go. Please keep posting on social media. I'll put up their handles so you all can follow both Raj and Carlos and their journey in Tokyo and their coverage and everything they're doing. Fantastic. Always talking to you guys. Okay. Arigato. Bye.